Welcome, and thank you for listening to the first ever Regional Educational Laboratory Midwest podcast. My name is Sarah Rand, and I'm here to tell you about some interesting work happening at REL Midwest. About three quarters of a million students nationwide fail to finish high school each year. That means about one out of five public high school students who enter freshman year do not graduate in four years or ever. And there are consequences. More on that later. Dropout rates are a serious problem, and a team from Realm Midwest is working on an interesting project that addresses these issues. Sonica Dillon is a researcher on this team, and I recently spoke with her about these issues. The reason we should care about dropout prevention is because we have uh, a great deal of students uh, within the Midwest and across the nation that are really struggling to successfully um, get through high school uh, and really... um, you know, get to college or, you know, start their careers. Uh, And the the impact of not being able to graduate or not completing high school is very dramatic. Um, So these students uh, tend to, um, or these non-graduates, I should say, tend to um, earn less um, and have more challenges um, post post high school um, economically. So, us focusing on dropout prevention is key because we're trying to make sure that um, everyone has a fighting chance to be successful. Um, And in the long term, um, it will be economically beneficial to the U.S. uh, and potentially uh, more globally. Failure to complete high school generally leads to reduced employment opportunities, and the jobs high school dropouts get are often low-skill, low-paying positions. Megan Norris, another researcher on this team, shared her thoughts about what is at stake here for high school dropouts. So we were talking about the value of high school and what's at stake for high school dropouts. And part of it is the benefit of being in school outside of just being in the classroom and learning the classroom curriculum. It's often very helpful for the socialization and for skills that you need once you enter the workplace or when you enter college. So it's things like being able to think and behave in a different environment that you're used to outside of sort of your comfort zone. Um, Society tends to benefit from these norms and students do as well. So when their time in high school is cut short, it can impact their ability later on in interviews or in the workplace in general. To address these issues, our team is working in Minnesota and Wisconsin, where 12% of students in Wisconsin and 19% of students in Minnesota did not graduate in 2012. Many states across the nation and within the Midwest region specifically have taken on the challenge of addressing the high school dropout problem head on by developing statewide early warning system initiatives. Megan Norris described what these early warning systems are. So we're talking about these early warning systems and the definition of what they actually are and what they're supposed to do is a system that compiles a bunch of data on students and the data is defined by the state or district or school that's looking at it. So some people use attendance and behavioral and course grades. That tends to be the standard that comes from research, but then other sometimes more advanced Um, districts and states use local validation. So they look up their own indicators for when students have historically dropped out before graduation or don't graduate on time in four years. And that can be specific course failures that are particular determinants, or it can be um, number of suspensions, number of behavioral referrals, anything that has been a trigger in the past. And these early warning system networks and this report that state agencies push out to their districts are to flag those early so that we can be proactive about implementing some interventions and specific supports to curb that behavior. Megan here is talking about the state systems that Minnesota and Wisconsin offer, but local districts often have their own system for looking at student indicators that can complement these state systems. Both Minnesota and Wisconsin have set ambitious goals to increase graduation rates, and their early warning systems are essential in reaching those goals. But Minnesota and Wisconsin have a problem. 
They do not know how their early warning systems and supports are being used and whether they are meeting the needs of the schools they serve. To help Minnesota and Wisconsin, Realm Midwest is partnering with both states to carry out a project called Early Warning System Implementation in Minnesota and Wisconsin, an early investigation. Megan Norris spoke about the main goals of this work. So the main goal of this work is to be able to have Wisconsin and Minnesota track how people are using these systems. They have them. There's great potential for them to be helpful in schools and helpful in increasing graduation rates, but they need to make sure that they're being used. And if they're not being used, it'd be great to know how to plug that hole so that they can be useful going forward. Sana Kadillan shared more details about this project. The project is set up to be... um, survey based. So the plan is for uh, Realm Midwest to work directly with representatives from both uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin to create a survey uh, around their specific statewide early warning system. Uh, in Minnesota, it's the, the MIR system and in Wisconsin, it's the DEW system. Um, and so our process or the way that it kind of unfolds is that we work with both these states and develop a survey. Um, in collaboration with them, and then we uh, have these states administer uh, the surveys out to uh, representatives from the schools that they serve. So the data that's collected from these surveys uh, will be analyzed um, with both with both states um, at the helm, um, and will be um, kind of fed back to uh, the respective organizations and inform decision making related to how to refine uh, the tools and supports that they have in place. Sonica told me that Wisconsin is specifically targeting principals at schools and hopes to get a high survey response rate with this group. Minnesota is targeting a broader group of school staff that has taken the early warning system training that the state provided. Sonica spoke about what it's been like to do this work over the past few months. I mean, if I had to pick one word, I would say it's really engaging. Uh, And the reason I pick engaging is because Um, As a researcher, I think I'm really learning a lot about the context in which um, these systems are being uh, generated and and kind of um, shared out to um, local schools, which is always, it's always great to have that context and understanding, but also I think engaging because um, this project has led to a lot of great and meaningful um, conversations about um, early warning systems and and dropout prevention in general. So um, I know that across the two states, um, there's been several opportunities where they get to learn about each of their respective systems. um, And that information has really um, kind of garnered um, a lot of great insight on both sides about um, other opportunities that they might pursue related to to the work that they're doing around dropout prevention. Um, and to see on that, that unfold is, I think, really fantastic. Both Sonica and Megan discussed how important it's been to work collaboratively with Minnesota and Wisconsin. Here's Sonica again. Um, I think it's important to, to do this project collaboratively because without it, um, I don't think that the quality of the, the survey or the materials that we produce would be um, would be as great as they currently are, or at least as I'd like to believe. Working collaboratively with these states has really informed our understanding of both of their systems and has helped us make the surveys that we have stronger. So uh, with, without those conversations, you know, we're really limited in what we can assume about these systems. Um, and really, uh, the utility of the surveys might be, might be limited as a result of that. Sonica talked about what surprised her about this work so far. She spoke about how the complexity of the early warning systems surprised her. One of the most surprising things is the complexity of these systems. Um, There's just so much thought that goes in into developing these state-level systems. Um, And I know that both Minnesota and Wisconsin have done a lot to try to make uh, both of their systems really accessible. Uh, And the way that that looks like is very different in each state, but the the amount of work that's associated with it is, uh, is amazing. Um, and to just have access to that information is really, um, really moving in a lot of ways, just because uh, these folks are really committed to helping students get to graduation um, and what they can do at the state level um, is, is 
is really thinking of this as a, at, a, at a systematic level um, and really uh, contributing that way. So um, I would say just just the broad level of understanding the gained um, as a researcher um, it has been really fantastic. Thanks so much for listening today. This podcast is the first in a series that will follow this project from start to finish. Stay tuned to learn more about this important work. Learn more at www.realmidwest.org. For Realm Midwest, I'm Sarah Rand. <laughs>